I'm going to be using our 361 A20R solder. It's a 6337 10 lead solder with a little flux core in the middle. I'll have a dry gauze sponge to wipe off my soldering pencil. And that's a little unusual. You'd think there would be a little wet sponge that you'd have in your soldering station. In this particular case, we use a dry sponge because one, you don't want to cool the tip off right before you want to use it. And two, uh, the gauze sponge is more aggressive at cleaning the uh, oxidization off the tip. So I'm going to clean the tip and I'm going to lightly tin the tip, place the solder in the target area, press the iron firmly down in and add fre fresh solder and flux. I got a wiggly tube here. Be sure and press firmly down so you get a lot of heat transfer so it happens quickly. Don't dilly-dally around. Act solder like you mean it. Pressing firmly down will not hurt the strain gauge. You can press normal to the surface as much as you like. And I'm going to use my surgical shears. I will strip them back. Now because this is a full bridge uh, device, we have to pay attention to polarity. And depending upon how this is going to work out, we're going to have two gauges in tension and two in compression. So the first thing we're going to do here is thermally strip our lead wire system. Now why do I mention thermal stripping? You don't use a mechanical method because that can nick the conductors and cause fatigue issues. Because I'm going to have all four conductors, this is one of the few times I'll clean this tip without retinning it. I'm going to lay the wire down in front of me, press the iron firmly through the insulation, turn it over, and do that again. This causes a stress concentration in the wire, and now I'm going to immediately clean that tip and retin it. If it remains exposed to the air with both that burning vinyl and no solder, it will oxidize very quickly and, and cause it to be very difficult to use. I'm going to use my thumb and forefinger to strip off the excess insulation. Remembering that I thermally stripped it rather than mechanically did it, I might it might be easier with your diagonal cutters or your teeth or something like that, but it's not better in terms of a uh, the lead wire system itself. I'm now going to twist them tightly down to the insulation, all four conductors. And I will tin all of them. You want to pre-tin them so that you don't have to fight with the wire while you're actually trying to attach it to the uh, beam itself or the, the tube itself. Clean the tip, lightly tin the tip, and this time we're going to take the solder and we're going to use the flux to tin the ends of this wire. No flux, no tin. Notice I'm adding flux and solder each time I'm trying to tin these wires. I'm now going to compare the amount of wire that I have here and the amount of terminal that I have available to attach it to. And I'm going to trim these off. And I typically use my diagonal cutters for that. And I'm going to trim them off to be about a little less than an eighth of an inch long. That should be sufficient for this application. Notice I'm putting my finger over the top of the uh, lead so it doesn't go shooting across the room and get into somebody's eye. They generally get unhappy with you when you do that. All right, in order to have the proper polarity in connecting our, our lead wire system, I need to uh, go through the appropriate steps here. So the first tab on the far right, in my particular case, so I can have a positive output when this is in tension and these are in compression in that shear mode, I'm now going to take a piece of the paper drafting tape I'm going to put it 
at the end of my uh, little red conductor there, and I'm going to slightly bend it down into the what I call the classic cobra head shape. And then I'm going to position that such that I'm right over the tab of the gauge that I'm going to be soldering to. This happens to be my third hand in terms of uh, why is it here. It holds the wire in position so that when I reflow that junction, the wire doesn't jump out of the position. Again, take a clean dry gauze sponge, clean the tip, lightly tin the tip, and reflow that solder junction. The next one will be S plus, so I'll need to take the green wire and go to it. So I take the paper drafting tape, a small chunk of it, putting it right at the end of the wire, again folding that little cobra head. Notice I'm stacking the tape on top of one another. I'm not worried about getting it out after I did the first one. My pointed tweezers are what I use to align the wire over the top of the terminal. And then I'm going to reflow that solder junction. The next one will be the S minus terminal or signal minus. Again, using my pointed tweezers to align the wire over the top of the tab. Clean the tip, lightly tin the tip, place the solder in the target area, press firmly through to add fresh solder and flux. And the last wire of the lead wire system will go to the final terminal on the very far left here. There will have to be a jumper wire installed and I'll talk about that in just a second. And the black wire goes all the way over here on the far left terminal in terms of my perspective. I'll reflow that junction. Now because this is a, a five tab full bridge and we've attached S plus to here, we need to jumper from this location over to here with a jumper wire to connect the S plus on the other side. So what I'm going to do is take a small piece of the green wire he says with great confidence. Now going to strip and tin the ends of this little green wire that's going to be my jumper. Thermally stripping it. I'm going to retin those. Fairly lightweight wire. <laughs> now the last step in putting this jumper into place, you'll notice it'll go on the other side of the terminals, so it's not going to interfere with them, is to one, trim them to the appropriate length. and then position them appropriately. Gotta get my spacing right here.
And I'm going to position that over the two terminals there and then do my final positioning. So this wire goes there and this one attaches to the other side of the S plus terminal. Now we'll go ahead and reflow those two junctions. Clean the tip, lightly tin the tip, and reflow those two junctions. All right, we now have completed the wiring of this particular assembly and we could in theory just rip this tape off and it might we might be successful but our recommendation is twofold one we want to take the tape off without damaging the gauge or the wiring associated with it and two we want to begin the, the process of removing the flux of the soldering operation I'm going to use our inline rosin solvent and I'm going to paint that over the back of the tape to start breaking down the mastic of the tape getting that nice and wet and then using my pointed tweezers I can just basically float that out of the way and I'll take this other piece here the top layer one will be floated out of the way then I work to the next one and the next one remembering that I stack them up you want to go in reverse order so that you don't pull the bottom one up and yank off your wires now this becomes a little tricky because now you have this tape underneath a wire and over the top of another one so we got to get it good and wet so that we can easily slide the tape out from underneath. Notice how the mastic has gotten less aggressive. Again, very carefully, you don't want to damage the lead wire. Slide this tape out from underneath your gauge installation. Again, continue flooding it so the rosin solvent breaks down the mastic, making it easier to remove. Oops, don't spill it on your lap. Your, your wife will be unhappy. Or significant other. Got to be politically correct. Now that I've completed the removal of all of the uh, paper drafting tape, I'm going to again begin the process of breaking down the flux and blotting it away. So what we want to do is work in and around each one of these solder junctions, and there's going to be a little crusty looking flux at each one of those. Flood the area and blot it dry and flood the area and blot it dry. You do this three to five times for typical installations until you achieve 10K mega ohms resistance to ground or higher after the flux has been, or the rosin solvent has evaporated or has been blotted away. I'm gonna pour this on my lap before this is all over with. Okay. It appears we have completed our installation. Just one more wash with the rosin solvent. And it's important to work up underneath the lead wires because there's where flu the flux will hide. And blot it away. And if you're extra confident you could go ahead and put in your strain relief loop for your lead wire system. And because I am, uh, some people would call me confident, other would call me cocky, but let's, let's look at this from a standpoint of being confident. I'm going to move the lead wires into position, run a lead wire or a cotton tip applicator up underneath them, and introduce a strain relief loop. Now the fact that we had to weave the wire a little bit, this is going to look a little unusual, but it still does the job. 
in a final, and I hate to use the word permanent piece of tape to hold down the strain relief loop, we'll take the, the PCT 2M tape and we'll tape that down. And at this point, we need to get our GIT 1300 and check for resistance to ground. Now, we can't check the installed resistance because it's a full bridge, but resistance to ground will give us an indication as to whether we've removed the flux well enough and if the gauge installation is ready to go. Yeah. Notice that the jumper wire, I'm trying to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the gauge, so it, it could be lifted up if you wanted to, but be careful, you don't want to tear off a tab. There it is the completed installation for a shear or torque measurement on a tube.